Yeah. <laughs> All Some, right. Somebody's running around, you know, committing crimes of violence. Yes, yes, we're, we're, we're well aware. Anything for press, right? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They come to get you. There's a good press, bad press, press. press. Yeah, that's uh, Brad's wearing hard, green, so they can't hard. find them. All right, here we go. One with the forum file. All right, here we go. Parag Shaney, Chapter 2. <laughs> All right, so um, what we covered in Chapter 1 was essentially a recap of what was in the first section, at least the end of the first section, which was talking about how the, the, the creation all works through a system of starting with Hashem creating koiches, and those koiches then um, make everything happen down here, and the malachim are the... the uh, the, uh, the, the appointed ones who are there to make all of that happen between the Koichis and here. And then we spoke about how <coughs> mankind has a very different um, relationship with Hashem than the rest of creation, because the rest of creation is simply acted upon, um, and they do what the Koichis designed, so to speak, for them to do. And that's just how they, they function. It's what we call nature. It just goes. Um, but mankind works very differently. Mankind has what we call hashkacha pratis is very um, specific watching and guarding and paying attention to all of our actions, all of our thoughts, all of our words, because everything that we do isn't a result of an effect, but it creates an effect. It is the source. So the things that we do go back up as we learn to the kachis, do whatever they do up there, and then that comes back down. Um, that comes back down. I'm sorry, one second. And that comes back down in different forms. Okay, um, can I, anybody have the Shul Zoom on their phone? The regular Zoom link? If not, anyone have a Zoom on their phone? I can just do it because yeah. I can't record and do Zoom at the same time. Oh, well, then that's not going to yeah, be very helpful. Be yeah. Nobody charged their phones overnight. Last night, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> um, okay. So we said that since everything that mankind does, says, and thinks has its effect, and those effects are going to change the course of everything, everything that goes on is going to be affected by that. So the amount of watching and connection, or what we call hashgacha, has to be very, um, very much, much greater than things that happen um, with the rest of creation. Because the th the, there are no decisions made by the rest of creation, and therefore the system isn't affected. But the things that we do, and the things that we think, and the things that we say as human beings, those do affect everything around us, and therefore there has to be a much closer connection between Hashem's watching and us, as opposed to the cows and the trees, etc. Okay? So that's what we talked about previously. Good? Ready to move on? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. So Parak Shani, chapter 2. The Mikre Hamino Anaisha Bailam is the way things work when it comes to mankind in this world. Says Ramchal. Hine. Karhikdamanu Hayais Tatachlis Briyas Mino Anaishi. We've already um, introduced the concept earlier back in the first section that the purpose of the creation of man is that he should merit and reach the, the truth of good, meaning the best situation. What is the absolute best situation? And that is connecting to Hashem 
in the world to come. Meaning to say, as we've explained, the, the greatest level a person can reach is the greatest level of good. And the greatest level of good is connecting to the ultimate of good. The ultimate of good is Hashem Himself. And the greatest that a person can achieve is by connecting in the closest way to that goodness. Hashem is the ultimate source of good. Hashem is the ultimate goodness. So the more a person is able to connect with that, is the better it's going to be. Right? Pretty, pretty simple equation. So that's what we discussed already um, back in the first section. Now this, as we explained, has to happen in the world to come. It's not going to happen here. That can only take place in the world to come because while we are here on earth in a physical body, living in a physical world, there, there are severe limitations in our abilities to connect with Hashem, who is obviously purely spiritual. So once we leave this world and we go to the world to come, that's when that connection is able to be realized, and that's when we're able to reach that pinnacle of goodness, which is the close connection with Hashem. Okay? So that, was, that we discussed already a uh, month ago. Okay, so Menimsa. So it comes out, based on this, Shesayis Kol Gilgulov, that at the end of all the happenings, everything that goes on, all the whole system, after all of that is done, Hinehu HaManuchal Elm this is the rest, the respite that we have from the challenges of this world in the world to come. Amnam, however, Gazra HaChachma HaAlyayna, it, the the uh, the supreme wisdom of Hashem decreed and understood. Hey, Yais Rois Venois, that is the the best and the most appropriate. Say Yikdam Lozem Atzav Ba'Elam Hazeh. That before reaching that point of connecting with Hashem in that high spiritual way, we should first exist here in this world. And Niksha Venigva Bechukas Seva Hazeh Ha'Elam. And we should be restrained and, and guided by the way Hashem created the nature of the world that we live in. That this will be the true and best, most appropriate preparation. To reach that goal that we're trying to reach. And based on this idea, Hashem designed everything in the world in order to make this plan happen. So that it should be as a preparation and to be ready for that which will come in the true world, in the world that is the goal, which refers to the world to come. So, <clears throat> again, I'm going through this rather quickly because this is really a review of what we've already learned, uh, but for the benefit of those who weren't here yet, just uh, I'll go through it one more time. The idea here is that Hashem created the entire creation for one purpose. And that is because Hashem, who is the ultimate of goodness, um, wants to do good for others. And if there are no others, there's no way for that to be realized. So therefore Hashem created in order to be able to have others to do good for. And the best way that a person can um, receive goodness, or any creature can receive goodness, is by earning it, because if you're simply given it, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel good, it doesn't have that same sense of accomplishment that it comes with, so it's vastly different. So, therefore, Hashem created a world which has challenges, and He said, follow these rules, and if you do that, you will become prepared and able and more ready to become closer to Me in the world to come. So by going through the challenges that we have in this world, we're able to raise our neshamas, and in raising those neshamas, we become more suitable for coming closer to Hashem in the world to come. So, <clears throat> the entirety of creation has this sole purpose. Everything, every single thing that is created, every single thing that happens, all of it, is for that goal. It's for us to earn our closeness to Hashem, our growth of our neshama, and our portion in the world to come, which is the connection to Hashem. Okay? So that's essentially what we covered um, before, and that's the system that he's uh, just wants to get clear over here. The system of the world is, we're here, we have, we have guidelines, we have boundaries, we live with things like time and space and physicality, 
and 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 uh, you know desires and all these other things, all these come together for the purpose of our being tested and our ability to grow through those tests. And in doing so, we raise our neshamas up to a level that they will be better suited to come closer to Hashem in the world to come. Okay, and that's how the whole world is designed. Everything in it, everything about it, it all follows that path, all for that plan. Okay, clear? Is this good? Mm-hmm. Got it? Yes. Okay. Rabbi. Yeah. Rabbi? Why, why didn't you say pun intended when you said sole purpose? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute you, so we don't have to deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are you feeling, Doc? You sound like you're back to yourself. Making steady progress as designed by Hashem. Steady progress. Okay, I hope that progress includes um, working on the humor factor as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, good. Glad to hear it. I hope you get well quick. All right. <laughs> okay. He wanted to know why I didn't mention a pun. Let's move on. <laughs> ah, however. Hachana <laughs> hazait. This preparation, hine he al it, it it revolves around two uh, two approaches, two directions. ishi <clears throat> The first or one is individual, and one is general. Okay, so he'll explain this. Ha'ishi, the individual, who inyan kinia sa'adam eshlemusay b'masa is the idea of a person achieving perfection through his actions, through the things that he does. The haklali and the general, who his koinen hamin ha'anayshi b'klali la'elam It is the, the, the whole of mankind coming to a point where it is ready for the world to come. So there's, he's saying that there are two systems at play. There's the individual and his personal perfection. Is there perfection? Is there perfection? Okay, so that's something we discussed again in the beginning. The The goal is always to reach your perfection. Uh, okay. And yes, everyone can reach the their perfection. Um, so there's that individual journey, the individual challenge, the individual growth that every human being needs to go through. And then there's the general, which is the bigger picture of humanity as a whole reaching a level, a state, in which they are ready for the world to come. So as we've learned, being ready for the world to come means that we've done enough that our bodies are able to receive the influence from the soul that will allow them to be uplifted to exist in the world to come. If we're too physical, we're too into physical things, then our bodies will not be able to be influenced enough and then we won't be able to survive in the world to come. And that's where the problems are. So the, there's, there's two tracks over here. And he's going to discuss each of them individually. We're not going to get to both today. Um, but just understand, there are two tracks. There's the individual track, and then there's the mankind track. They're two different things. Okay, so. <coughs> okay, so Pirish Zainyanu. The explanation, the understanding of this uh, concept is as follows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you affect another person in the positive? Can you affect another person in the positive? Um, I think that's going to depend what you mean. If you're talking about affecting someone, meaning that they might have, uh, you know, they might win the lottery or something like that, I'm going to say presumably yes. If you mean that it will help them make proper choices, I'm going to say the answer is no. A person's choice is fully independent. That's fully within their control. It's in their mind. They can be influenced by others, and that will help them make right or wrong choices. But the choice is ultimately entirely theirs. When it comes to things that happen to people, yeah, um, I could theoretically um, affect somebody's life. I could, I could feel from them. Now, ultimately, that might not cost them anything. Because if Hashem says... You know, you're not supposed to lose that money. You'll get it some other way. The guy will get it back. So it won't actually affect anything. 
but there's also a line of reason, and we discussed this at length, there's also a line of reasoning that says that to a certain extent, my free will can affect somebody else in physical sense. Right, right, right. I, was, I mean, of course you can influence somebody, and then, without them even knowing, the same way you can influence the environment. Yeah. Or I mean, you can give somebody the opportunity to do a mitzvah, and then you're influencing them. Yeah, so, right, right, right. I mean, I didn't mean, you, I meant, you mean through the kaiches. I meant through the kaiches. Right. Yeah. So, so the answer is that things that are governed by the kaiches, the answer will be yes. But things that are not, which is people's choices, which aren't governed by the kaiches, those are internal, so then the answer would be no. But we can take out somebody. So you can take out of someone, which will help their neshama. You might not be able to affect the minhah and the uh, the, uh, the, the larger uh, the general, race. yeah. Correct. Okay. Yes, that is correct. But but also keep in mind that we do um, have a very strong power of influence. So okay. if if we're if we are creating a society which promotes goodness, then in that way we're affecting the people around us who are within that society because they're surrounded by goodness which will make them more apt to doing good things. If we live in a society of denigration, then Again, the people in that society are more likely to be leaning in that direction. So in that sense, we certainly can affect other people, right, right. much less directly, but yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So the, the understanding of this is as follows. Since mankind is created with a good inclination and a bad inclination, with the ability to choose between the two, free choice. It's, it's inevitable that there's going to be some good and some bad. Everyone's got free choice. Statistically, there's going to be some people who are going to do good and some people who are going to do bad. It's just the way the, the chips fall. Vesayf ha-gilgul and the end result after everything of the whole process is done, what should happen is that the evil should be pushed away, they should be set aside, and the good ones should be gathered, and there should be one group made of all the good people, that for that group is destined that their future will be the world to come, but Taiva Amiti with the true good, Hamusak Bai, which they have achieved through this. So what he's saying is that on paper what should happen is that there should be good people and there should be bad people, because there's free choice. So ultimately some people are going to go one way, some people are going to the other. Not that everyone can't be good or everyone can't be bad. That we know is true. Everyone could everyone is fully within control of themselves everyone can be fully good or fully bad but realistically that's not going to happen if you look around that's just not what the way it's going to work and so what should happen on paper is that the bad people should be set aside the good people should be gathered and they should have the world to come that's what would be on paper now he's going to discuss that that's not actually what happens as he's about to say so before you ask all your questions on this uh, let's just continue he says the ulam however this idea, this concept of having free choice, that requires the ability that we mentioned in the different types of people, to be either good or bad, or also to have that there is some good and some bad. Who atzmai that itself? Machriach of Sharazeh gam kime ma'ase kol ish me ishe hamin. That will also apply within each person. So remember, originally we split it. We said there's the general populace of man, and then there's the individual. So the same way we understand that within the general populace, there's going to be good people and there's going to be bad people. We also have to recognize that within man, you're going to have that same balance. There's going to be some parts of us that are going to do good, and there's going to be some parts of us that are going to do bad. 
Shulam Afshur Shia Kulam Taifum Kulam Rai. It is possible to be fully good or fully bad. Yes, that, that can be done. The Afshur Shia Kutasum Taifum Kutasum Rai. But there's also the ability for it to be partially good and partially bad. That's pretty general. That's pretty normal. Most of us are in that category of being somewhat good and somewhat not good. And that is what stops the original plan that we mentioned that would make sense on paper to take all the good people and bring them together and send them to Elam Haba. That's the, the, the problem with that is that within the people, there's going to be some of each. That's how it works. The same way we understand within the general populace, there's going to be some good people and some bad people. Within each individual, there's going to be some good parts and some bad parts. So we can't simply take the good people and put them in the world to come. Because everybody is going to have, or most people are going to have, some degree of a mixture within them of good and bad. So therefore that system isn't black and white. It's not just going to work that way. There has to be more to it. Because you already find within one individual, in the Yanim Taivim, in Yanim Rayim, certain good things and certain bad things. Within every individual, not every, like you said, it's possible to have someone who's fully good or fully bad, but as a general assumption, there's going to be some of each within each individual. So, Ula Hashgiach al Kitsasim Vlayashar, and to simply look at some of what mankind does and not look at the other parts. Even if the part that Hashem is going to pay attention to is the majority, that is not going to follow the concepts of justice and truth. Yeshua said, "Didn't I send us? Because justice demands that every action has its consequences. And gedolim hengtanim, whether they're large or small." In Harbe Himaat, whether they're a lot or a little. So this in this this one line here, he said a, a he, he set forth a very important element, and that is that Hashem doesn't ever overlook things that we do. Hashem can forgive, but Hashem will never overlook. Every single thing that is done has an accounting. Every thought, every word, every action, there is an accounting. So you can't simply say, well, to simplify the system of who's going to go to Elam Haban and who's not, Hashem will look at the majority. Say, so most of the things you did were good, so you go to Elam Haban. That doesn't work, because then justice has not been served. Because justice demands that everything that we do has an accounting. So you can't just look at the majority and say, oh, it's the majority good, so you're good to go. And we're just going to ignore all the bad stuff. That doesn't work. There is a system of justice that is demanding, <coughs> that Hashem created the world with. Hashem is truth, and truth necessitates justice, which is that every single thing has an accounting. So therefore, he says, we can't just go with majority. That's not going to work. There has to be consequence for every single thing. Okay. So right now, we're still stuck. We still don't have a system for getting the people who need to go to Elam Haba and the people who don't deserve to go there somewhere else. So that hasn't been worked out yet because we have this um, mesh or this, this um, junction within mankind between the good and the bad that happens internally. And therefore there's going to be some on each side. There's going to be some good and some bad. And even if it's just one bad to 10 million good, the one bad still has to be dealt with. It can't simply be overlooked and send the person to the world to come. It has to be dealt with every single action. Okay? Make sense? Good? Yes. First question was earlier. You said um, you said good. You said good enough or prepared enough for the world to come. What is enough? Okay, that's a good question. Well, you'll notice that he used that term when he was talking about mankind in general. He wasn't talking about the individual. He used that term when talking about mankind in general. So when we get to that, we'll talk about that more. Okay. But it seems that there are levels that um, will be a per- there's a certain threshold a person or mankind will have to reach in order to be suited for the world to come. Now, that doesn't mean that the negative won't have to be dealt with, but there has to be a certain threshold of positive that has to be reached 
in order for those souls of, of mankind as a whole to be prepared for the world to come. Oh, no, 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 no. Hashem deals with all this. this none of this is up to us. Okay. This is all Hashem's department, and it's about to be described. We're going we're gonna to get there. Um, he's going to say exactly how it does work. But right now, we've just figured out how it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Coffee overboard. Did it, not, did it not come with napkins? Mine, mind, don't you keep like a roll of hipster towels on your sleeve or something? I do, but you know what? I ran out of tongue tied to take them out of my car. Man. Now they're in my kitchen. <laughs> That's for real. <laughs> now look what you did. <laughs> it was it must have been. <laughs> well, it was your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being curious. You're the first person to ask a question. Good job. Well, not the first. No, you're the second. You're the second. Yeah, you are the second. There you go. <laughs> That's right. All right. All right. All right. Damage under control here. Okay. All right. Now it smells good too. It does. Mm. <laughs> I don't drink it, but I like the way it smells. All right. Here we go. Let's continue. Okay. <clears throat> Alkane, therefore, 